Hello there guys, so today I'll be talking about these sort of like a several ways of how average crypto dev uh, can manipulate um, average crypto investor. So in a sense, in a sense, you know, how is it possible uh, to sort of like a create this sort of like a overall impression uh, that you're giving something that you're sort of like a creating value while in reality none of it actually exists to begin with. Uh, so coming back to the main topic, so what are the ways to manipulate the actual holders in crypto space? So at first, at first, what you can actually do is inflate the market cap. And now the sort of like a one of the main advices that people when they join the crypto that they get and that you should invest in large projects with large market caps, uh, projects that are serious and so on, so on, so on. Now, in reality, what people don't realize that the actual value in a project is not in a market cap, but is in the liquidity pools. These liquidity pools that hold project tokens and BNB, BSD or any other stuff that actually has the value represents the actual value that the project holds. And on all of it is in the liquidity pools. So the sort of like a main way that devs, um, you know, uh, use the sort of like a mechanic to create the sort of like illusion instead of the sort of like a usual ratio that people imagine one to one ratio. So let's say one project token for one dollar uh, to achieve the sort of like a perfect market cap. Uh, some of the projects that are more deceitful, uh, they use uh, crazy ratios, let's say like a hundred normal tokens to one dollar. And then you have all these absurd market caps. And basically, and basically, you know, later they use those sort of like a claims that uh, the token is literally, you know, top 10, top 20, one of the most used crypto in the universe and so on and so on. While in reality, uh, the project literally holds, let's say, $100,000 in the liquidity pool, $10 million in the liquidity pool. And in comparison to the main cryptocurrencies, it's uh, basically fuck all. Now, at the same time, uh, these sort of like inflated rates. Now, this is just an example of a go token. Just as an example, basically, when you have these sort of like inflated rates, it doesn't mean, let's say, if you have 10% of these tokens, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have $34 million in your wallet. It just basically means that you own 10% of this liquidity pool. And let's say, if you were to sell that amount, it only means that, you know, the highs are higher and lows are lower. It just means the sort of like a more drastic crash or, or more drastic increase, let's say, if you buy those actual tokens. Uh, looking further, uh, the vast majority of crypto projects advertise all those rewards, infinite rewards, and there are sort of like a several different ways of how you can receive those rewards. Now, uh, at first, before we talk about the rewards, um, you know, it is fair to explain uh, why your token value actually increases or decreases. So imagine, imagine there is a liquidity pool uh, for the project that uses Aussie tokens uh, with BSD. So uh, whenever, so let's say, let's say there's thousand Aussie tokens in the liquidity pool for a thousand BSD, uh, the ratio is one to one. So let's say whenever someone is buying uh, the token, like uh, let's say the reason why the actual token price increases is because someone, let's say, buys uh, 10 Aussie tokens. So it takes out from liquidity pool Aussie side, it takes out 10 tokens and then transfers the demanded amount in BSD into the liquidity pool. And then basically what happens, you have less Aussie tokens to more BSD tokens, thus the value increases. Now, whenever people sell, mm, you know, next thing you know, there is absurd amount of Aussie tokens in the liquidity pool and absolute minimal amount of BSD uh, tokens that actually have the value. And basically, this is how more or less things work. Uh, looking further, uh, you know, if you were to think about the rewards in crypto space, so, you know, at least personally, I would classify those rewards in those sort of like a three different categories. So there's good rewards, 
uh, rewards uh, that were generated from some sort of activity as profits so in the sense sort of like at this traditional way uh, money makes money you know you you invest let's say you you you, you take a whole sack of cash uh, you get yourself a shop and later on over the time that shop sort of like a creates some sort of like a actual product generates some sort of like a actual value and profits from it the, the, the so the sort of like a first category of rewards are the actual real profits from actual generated value now the second type of rewards is the rewards that you receive in minuscule amounts for which you basically paid yourself it's sort of like a they are called rewards but in reality it's just, it, it's just a bunch of bullshit i mean those rewards don't really exist and then there is a third sort of like a way uh, rewards in terms of inflation or something uh, even more dodgy and, uh, and basically the basic idea you know that everyone gets these free tokens uh, and you get these free tokens as the rewards and you know you do your calculations and then a month's time you'll have your own Lambo but in reality you know uh, it's just not how things work uh, looking further uh, there is very little actual projects that make the actual money and increase projects worth value the vast majority of the tokens uh, are paying um, meh rewards so those basically rewards that you literally you literally deduct your own money to pay your own rewards in the nearby future or basically or basically those sort of like a non-existent rewards uh, basically just sort of like a bunch of lies or uh, sort of like a change flex of truth so examples of mech rewards uh, i would say those are the reflection tokens uh, that reward you with a percentage from the trading volume so you know i mean you buy you buy the token and let's say let's say the percentage that, that you have to pay that you have to sacrifice on a buy or sell is 15 percent so you buy into the token you pay 15 percent and seven percent uh let's say eight percent is used to finance the project seven percent is used to reward the holders so quite literally you know you sacrifice 15 percent of your own money to pay everyone those rewards and basically every single person that joins or leaves the project is doing literally the same there is no actual sort of like a value created or profits people are just literally voluntarily setting aside a stack of their own cash to sort of like a, a have these in a sense rewards later on uh, the second way uh, things like rank token that sells nodes that do not exist to begin with and in return in return for all the money that you spend over time uh, you get to receive in return those sort of like a minuscule amount of what you spent so let's put that way uh, sort of like in general these sort of you could say ponzi schemes and the thing is with them that you know uh, some of them straight up crash uh, you know just uh, just developers just steal everything and run uh, some of them pay out uh, crazy amounts of rewards and literally you don't even uh, have enough time to sort of like uh, Roy um, Get back your investment before things crash to absolutely nothing And then there is this sort of like a bad or as I would say fake rewards so now the sort of like a trend uh, before this was metaverse then all those uh, flockies and Elon coins and now we have DAOs all over the place and there is literally guys trying to launch those 10 contracts without actually understanding how things work and literally in the pre-sale failing to launch uh, their DAOs and so on and so on and literally those DAOs just popping up one after another one and basically in those DAOs the sort of like uh, main sort of like example how I would say they give you also those sort of like a fake rewards is that so uh, they basically are inflating their own tokens at a crazy rate d during each rebase when they meant more of the actual tokens to pay out those rewards so there is those legit uh, DAOs um, those that started everything like Olympus DAO Wonderland and so on, so on and then there is the rest of those DAOs that you know just 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 pay the rewards 
and before I go to this, so I'll just like, explain basically what happens. So on these DAOs, you have the option to stake or buy bonds. Maj vast majority of people they choose to stake. Now those DAOs advertise that basically they have the sort of like intention of actually replacing the stable coins. You know, uh, having the sort of like a whole thing that is literally backed by crypto assets and so on, so on. While basically in reality they are trying to become the sort of like a most stable thing that you can use everywhere while at the same time trying to achieve the sort of like a goal of paying a highest rewards in let's say Binance as a smart chain as a whole and basically what that means that they're trying to become the most stable crypto asset there is while at the same time inflating themselves at the highest rates in a Binance smart chain there is because basically basically at least in these type of projects you know you stake you stake your tokens and you have let's say set rates uh 30 returns every five days so basically during every uh, rebase every eight hours you get a portion of those rewards and basically and basically during the rebase what happens those rewards are literally minted and because more or less uh, because more or less every single person is staking basically what happens uh, these sort of like uh, rewards uh, it's it's not rewards it's uh, just uh, inflation so you know uh, one month you have uh, 10,000 tokens the ne next month you have you already already those tokens in the hundreds of thousands because of the insane inflation ratios and really they are no different from uh, no, normal fiat currencies or, or, or inflation rates so in this example I took Ven Venezuela as you can see as you can see from 1973 until 2021 the average inflation rate over there was 3758 uh, percent looking further as you can see once again so everything started to go down the hill in 2015 the inflation rate was 181 percent the highest in the world at, at that time and then and then as you can see this is extremely important uh, this data from 2016 17 18 was unpublished in between 2016 and 18 and was revealed only in 2019 so government wasn't even showing the actual inflation rates uh, people realize and find out the sort of like actual situation of what is happening only when it was too late basically you just keep the money try to save the money and next thing you know everything is worth nothing with that being said uh, these are the venezuela's inflation rates and then we have all these DAOs that are trying to become most stable cryptocurrencies that could be used anywhere and everywhere while paying out literally let's see like 500 percent reward rates in a five days time because it's christmas literally literally the total supply in the five days increasing five times so you know uh, there's people there's considerable amount of people that are actually sort of like a sitting around with their own lambo calculators and calculating that let's say you know if you invest 200 dollars in one of those DAOs, because of those insane reward rates of 200 billion api in a year's time you'll buy you'll buy um, you know hundreds of lambos you'll buy your own continent while in reality you'll have not let's say not let's say 10 tokens that are worth 500 dollars but you'll have um, let's say you know 10 million tokens that are worth 500 dollars basically quite literally nothing just changes ju ju just the total supply because i mean you know everything is literally just inflated and yeah as i mentioned uh you know 30 percent rewards every five days and the sort of like a thing is that people actually believe in these sort of like actual rewards and uh, the sort of like uh, the only reason why as uh, they pay out these sort of like rewards uh, that the value of the token goes up 
is because is because the people that come in into the project itself let's say every five days uh, the project pays a 30 percent for the stakers and rewards so every five days the total supply is inflated by 30 percent now the only sort of like a way that um, there's some sort of like a DAO token could stay at the same price if the amount of people that come into the proje project within five days outperform this metric so let's say so let's say if the liquidity pool from the newcomers will increase by 30 percent then the token price will remain the same if if there will be more than 30 percent in the liquidity pool from all those newcomers then the price will go up but yeah basically you know these are sort of like the rewards that don't really exist as the rewards and it doesn't matter what calculator you use whether it's lambo calculator or not lambo calculator uh, the sort of like a value created is not existent and it's 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 not a reward it's a, it's a, it's inflation rates everyone is receiving it not just you uh looking further uh, you could also say that in a sense uh, burn mechanics could be sort of like uh, assigned in a sense to sort of like a this manipulation in a sense and if you think about the stuff and this is uh, just a random token uh, from the pink sale dot finance one of the pre-sales that for them and as you can see 45% uh, of the tokens of the total supply were burned 17.2% are unlocked for the team 16.8% are, uh, are for the liquidity and 21% are for the pre-sale so if you look further uh, the total pre-sale assuming that it fills in the hard cap for it is 350 bnb now as you can see uh, this liquidity percent metric is extremely important it's only at 80 percent and what basically that means that 80 percent of the raised funds from the pre-sale will go towards the actual liquidity pool the other 20 percent will be kept with the team which means that basically and uh, basically once you buy in into the project uh, in a sense in a sense you're already losing 20 percent 70 bnb is going towards the owners and at the same time uh, let's say looking into the future after the, the launch of the token uh, you know this 45 percent burn already happened which basically means th the total supply of the token uh, after the launch will be this sort of like a metric so it won't be it won't be the sort of like a total hundred percent but it will be 55 percent of uh, sort of like initial total supply will represent a hundred percent and and basically and basically whenever you participate in a pre-sale and stuff like that what you're actually doing with those 350 bnb you are buying this proportion of the tokens so when you spend 350 bnb you lose 70 bnb because it goes towards the team then uh you buy you buy just the 21 percent out of 55 total uh percentage of the tokens to yourself and then there is this whole team tokens allocation so whenever 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 people announce those sort of like a burns and stuff like that they are sort of like a, in a sense just burning the tokens in their own wallet and by that the total sort of like a supply of the tokens decreases which basically means that let's say you know if you had if you had 10 percent of the supply and there was something like, like let's say 100 tokens in total 100 percent and they burned half now your 10 percent of the tokens are worth 20 percent and basically this is the same stuff and the sort of like a main idea behind this is that the sort of like a whole burn thing at least in the sort of like a traditional sense uh, it is it is it is it is neutral it's not positive it's not negative because in a sense you just get access to what you paid for originally uh and yeah so uh these are sort of like uh main points that i wanted to share because i mean you know uh as i go through the projects i realize that 
you know, uh, some of the people don't re really understand or realize this sort of like a basic uh, main concept. And, uh, you know, there's people quite literally sitting with their Lambo calculators counting how in two, three weeks time uh, within uh, some of these sponsors, uh, how they will buy a house, Lambos and all this stuff. And I mean, in reality, it's just not how stuff works. And yeah, um, that's all there is to it. At the same time, I'll just mention this, that, you know, in a crypto space, uh, there, there, is, there is a lot of things. And basically, basically, if the project actually claims that they are somehow sort of like a profiting and stuff, that they are somehow uh, generating the profits and stuff like that, uh, you know, original sense, it should be sort of like a, a buys of the tokens from the teams and then burns of those tokens and that way the sort of like overall project value would increase at the same time uh, from what I've noticed people put up with a lot of bullshit uh, let's say you know projects manage to collect something like 12 million dollars in value over a month time but don't have any time to dox themselves uh, you know uh, literally literally like a week ago or so um, I was actually participating in text-based AMA. So, so you know, there's there's usual AMAs when let's say Dev um, turns on turns on his camera and so on, so on, and uh, and answers the questions from the community or voice-based AMA. And then and then a week ago, I was I, I got a chance to participate in actual text-based AMA, and yeah. So, you know, people should not really, sh should be sort of like a braver, should ask questions, should not put up with the bullshit, and should analyze every single time. Whenever you invest, you should al analyze whether these sort of like uh, things add up, whether they're sort of like uh, these sort of like uh, loose ends, uh, things that don't make any sense. And if there is any, you should question it every single time till it's solved. Or, or just not invest to begin with. You should not put up with the, any of this sort of like a nonsense because this is how you lose your money. And that's all there is to it. Um, anything I say is my personal opinion. Uh, it is not financial advice. And that's all there is to it. Thank you for your time.